The National Gallery is full of angels, so to choose one from medieval times all the way to the 18th century has been actually rather difficult. But I've chosen this picture here by Perugino. And what you can see is the Archangel Raphael accompanying the young Tobias. Now this is a wonderful biblical story where the young Tobias goes on a journey. He's accompanied by a man who looks after him, who tells him to catch the fish that he's holding there on his wrist. And this will have magic curative powers and will heal his father's blindness and protect him in his marriage. We know he's an angel because he's got wings, but Tobias didn't recognize him. And it's only at the end of the story that the Archangel Raphael reveals his uh, identity. But I'm struck by this, of course, because in a sense, what this is saying is there's, there may be an angel beside you. You may not recognize him. The National Gallery is full of angels. We may not recognize them. There are many hidden angels in National Gallery paintings, and one that's come to light really recently is in Gossart's Adoration of the Magi, painted at the beginning of the 16th century. A large painting full of beautiful details, but only recently was it spotted that in a window opening near the head of the Virgin is a face, and above the face you can see the tip of the wing reaching up, so we know that's an angel. It's a painting that's full of angels. There are angels circling around above, coming from afar, there's a great sense of perspective in this painting. The angels above come towards you like planes coming down to land. So they're heading for Earth, but there's just one angel that's actually landed, and that's the one that we've just discovered. I love these angels. I love this picture. I love this artist. I love this city. Now, if you look at the back, there's a domed church and my angels live on the roof of that church, right in the background of this painting by Canaletto, showing Venice, the Basin of St. Mark's on the Feast of the Ascension, where the doge comes out in his big barge and symbolically marries the city, because Venice attributed its miraculous powers and its prosperity to divine protection. In Memling's Dun Triptych, there are two angels with the most beautiful snow white wings. And what I love about them is that they actually do look identifiable as swan wings. And if you look really closely into the picture, there are actual swans on the river behind them. But what's even better yet is that these two angels look as if they could take off with those wings. And that's a lovely added feature of this picture. I'm always finding new angels in the National Gallery's collection. One of my favourite recent discoveries is in a tiny painting that's part of a large altarpiece by the Venetian painter Carlo Crivelli. In this little painting of the Nativity, look at the top right hand corner, you'll just find some angels hidden in a cloud. And it's these sort of chance discoveries that make spotting angels in the National Gallery collection a sport that everybody can take part in. I think that what one can do when one visits the National Gallery is make a personal selection of the angels that interest you, that attract you, uh, because they're beautiful, because they're doing very interesting things. And I think in a way every visitor can make their own collection of angels.